From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday the 14th of February 2023. Good afternoon. In today's Spotlight story, we run through the new Russian offensive. This isn't the only thing happening in the world though, so we'll run through three of today's other important stories. And in our exclusive Nebula section, we look at just whether a deal on the Northern Ireland Protocol is around the corner. But first, is Putin starting a new offensive in Ukraine? With just over a week until the one-year anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has said that we are witnessing the beginning of a new Russian offensive in Ukraine. We see no signs that President Putin is preparing for peace, Stoltenberg said. According to Reuters, Russia has intensified its operations across broad areas of southern and eastern Ukraine, with Ukrainian troops and towns in eastern Donetsk being bombarded by Russian forces on Tuesday. As we've reported on many times, the city of Bakhmut remains a key target for Russia, as securing the settlement would give its forces some momentum after a series of setbacks and provide a stepping stone for further advances in Donetsk. Russia and Ukraine have traded claims of pushbacks and advances on the front line, with the Kremlin saying Russian troops had advanced some two kilometres to the west in four days, and the Russian mercenary Wagner Group claiming to have taken the village of Krasnohora to the north of Bakhmut. A Ukrainian official called this claim not true. The UK's Ministry of Defence acknowledged that Wagner Group forces had almost certainly made further small gains to the north of Bakhmut, but said that the tactical Russian advance on the south of the town had likely made little progress. The anticipated new offensive has put NATO member states in a race of logistics with Russia, Jens Stoltenberg has warned. The NATO boss said that Ukraine is using ammunition faster than NATO members can produce it. Key capabilities like ammunition, he said, must reach Ukraine before Russia can seize the initiative on the battlefield. He went on, yes we have a challenge, yes we have a problem, but we have a strategy to tackle that. Ammunition is going to be high on the agenda when NATO defence ministers meet this week in Brussels. They're also set to debate the potential of sending fighter jets to Ukraine. In an apparent acceptance that the situation in Ukraine may be about to get worse, The US government has told its citizens to leave Russia immediately. In announcing this new instruction, US authorities warned that American citizens may face arbitrary detention or harassment by Russian law enforcement agencies. The last time the US government warned its citizens to leave Russia was when Putin announced his partial mobilization. Okay, so that's the biggest story of the day, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So here's a rundown of three other stories. In the week we've been gone, it seems that UFOs, or more specifically, suspected spy balloons, have been dominating the news. Following the US shooting down a Chinese spy balloon last week, it seems that more of such balloons have flown over North America, with the US reliably shooting them down. It now appears that relations between China and the US has deteriorated rapidly, with the Chinese government claiming that the US has flown balloons illegally over China more than 10 times in the last year without permission. In a clear snipe at the US's decision to shoot down the balloons, the Chinese authorities have claimed that when they spotted similar balloons, they responded in a responsible and professional manner. For their part, the US government has denied that they sent these balloons. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. More than a week on from the devastating earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria, the death toll continues to rise. At time of writing, more than 37,000 people are reported to have been killed. That's more than 31,000 in Turkey and nearly 6,000 in Syria. The UN's aid chief, Martin Griffiths, said on Monday that the total death toll was expected to surpass 50,000 across the two countries. Much of the world's attention has been on Turkey, but the humanitarian situation in Syria has proven to be particularly difficult, with the added complication of 12 years of civil war and different parts of the country being controlled by different groups. That has left many Syrians, particularly in the opposition-controlled parts of the northwest, angry at being effectively cut off from crucial aid. 
After high-level talks with Syria's President Assad, the UN announced today that the Syrian government had finally agreed to open two border crossings on its boundary with Turkey to allow for UN aid deliveries from Turkey into the opposition-held northwest. Previously, only one border crossing was open, and the other two will shortly be opened for three months. The government of New Zealand has today declared a state of emergency over Cyclone Gabrielle. A state of emergency has only been called twice in the history of New Zealand. The first in 2011 for the Christchurch earthquakes, and the second in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. With the cyclone wreaking havoc across the north of the country, a state of emergency gives the government more resources. Resources which can be directed to the six most badly affected regions. Local media reports have shown people stranded on the roofs of their houses, and others having their entire houses swept away by landslides. Prime Minister Chris Hipkins has said it is, so far, too early to say how many people have been displaced or injured. Our thoughts are with those affected by the cyclone. We end the main section of today's daily briefing with some good news from Brazil, where recent data shows that deforestation in Brazil's Amazon rainforest fell 61% in January 2023 compared to January 2022. It coincides with the first month of Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva's presidency. Lula had pledged to reverse the surge in Amazon deforestation that took place under his predecessor, President Bolsonaro. Brazilian environmental agents launched their first anti-logging raids under Lula in mid-January. The WWF called it positive news, but pointed out that it's still too early to talk about a reversal trend. That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you want to see our discussion of whether a new Northern Ireland deal is on the horizon, then watch the extended ad-free edition of The Daily Briefing over on Nebula. That's the streaming service we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to be already watching. That means that by signing up, you not only get an extended ad-free daily briefing every single day, you also get to watch exclusive and ad-free videos from the best educational creators on YouTube. That's things like Real Life Law's incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's Underexposure, which beautifully dives into complex and shadowy topics you've always wanted to know more about, or Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content which never comes to YouTube. If you want to sign up, use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.